performing a network assessment on your first building. By the time this nugget is done, you will be able to walk into a new building and assess network requirements based on devices. What on earth are we doing here? <laughs> that is a great question to ask no matter where you are. Well, as I mentioned at the very beginning of the series, we are departing from the traditional method of education and taking a project-based approach. So in order for us to be successful, we have to have a project to work on and this is it. The company that we're working for or we're contracted with is growing. As a matter of fact, they just expanded to a brand new office suite and they've brought us together to set up the network so all the IT things function. Remember, this is how business owners think of IT. They think, well, in order for my pet store or bowling alley or shoe store or whatever the, the business is, they go, I, I've got to have computers to be successful to process the accounting, to do the inventory and all of that. So in order for all of those computers to work, I need somebody to do the IT. And that's our job. So congratulations, tenant. We just got the keys to the brand new building. <laughs> so our first question is, now what? Well, our first step is getting everything connected together. It's pretty rare that I'm left speechless when somebody asks me a technology question, but it actually happened not too long ago when my six-year-old came up and said, Daddy, what is the internet? And it was funny because my mouth opened to say something, but I actually stood there and no words came out. And my, my wife in the other room just started cracking up because she saw me and I think she literally saw my brain melting down as I was trying to take all this technology and disseminate it at a six-year-old level. But then something brilliant happened. I said, honey, well, let's say, let's say I have a picture on this laptop and I, I because I always have a laptop on my lap, right? I said, matter of fact, let, let's take a picture. And so I did. I opened the little webcam and I took a picture of me and I said, now I know mommy really wants this picture as her background. And of course, she's now playing the game. She's like, oh, I do, I do, I do. And I said, so there's a couple ways that I could get that to her computer. I could connect it with a cable. That's the old way we used to do things where we would cable everything together. Now, as you might imagine, my six-year-old's already starting to get antsy, like, oh no, I've, I've asked the wrong question at this point, right? But I, I just keep going. And I said, I could connect it with a cable. And that's exactly what happened a long, long time ago before you were ever born. There's a whole bunch of schools that said, you know what, we have a bunch of pictures and we want to share all those pictures together so we're gonna connect all our schools up and then the other school saw them and they're like oh man we're we're jealous we want to get connected up to to your schools too and then some people were like well I want to connect to the to the school from my house and and before long everybody's like you know what we should all just connect together and that's what we now call the internet and I think my six-year-old goes, okay, and, and ran away. I don't even, obviously the impact that I thought it would make didn't, didn't happen, but let's end the six-year-old conversation and talk about reality. That's why most people draw the internet as a cloud. It's not that it is a cloud. It's just that there's so many connections tying everything together that the only way we can really represent it is just this big cloud of connections. And people have now coined to that phrase and said, oh, well, it's stored in the cloud. That just means it's stored somewhere on the internet that you can get to it from anywhere. And in order for us to get our new office suite connected so that we can join ourselves to this big cloud, we have to use some network cabling. Now, this is what I refer to as the old way of connecting, but it's actually the better way of connecting. You all can see wireless down here, and I'm gonna talk about wireless, but network cabling should be used anywhere and everywhere that you can. It's way more reliable, and most of the time is way faster than a wireless connection. There's two kinds of network cable that you can use. Copper, and most people call that ethernet cable, or fiber. The beauty of copper cable is it's cheap, easy to work with, and really good for short distances. And I define short as 100 meters or less. Fiber is a little bit more expensive. It's a little more difficult to work with, but it can go really long distances. That's what these schools use when they connected together. Even way back then, fiber optic cabling was real. And instead of going a few hundred meters, it could go miles and miles and miles and kilometers and kilometers and kilometers, depending on which part of the world you're in, to connect these big buildings together. 
The newer way of connecting that I've already mentioned is wireless, and that's stretching the cables into the air. So let's just say we have this building and we have a computer over there. That's daddy's computer, right? And there's mommy's computer, but mommy also has a smartphone that she wants to use. Well, that doesn't even have a port on it where I can plug in an ethernet cable or a fiber optic cable. It connects via wireless. And the way wireless works is you install a wireless access point in the ceiling or set it on a desk and connect it to a network cable. And it takes that signal from the network and broadcasts it into the air. The first thing that we're going to do as we walk into this new building is to perform an assessment. Specifically, I want to assess where are the devices going to go that need to be connected together. And to do that well, we need to mark them down on a piece of paper and that's why we need a building floor plan. Now, I've done this enough times that you'll often walk into the building with whomever is helping you get in there and you'll say, hey, do you have a floor plan? And they'll go, uh, somewhere. And chances are pretty good if they say that, it's gonna be lost in a series of files that will take forever to find. One of the great things that you can do is just go to the wall, most of the buildings will have them, and grab the fire escape plan. It's usually just a high level view of what the building is and it shows how you can get out of the building in case of a fire. Ask the person when you see it, hey, can I just make a quick copy of that? Now, some buildings will be small enough that they don't have a fire escape plan because everybody knows there's only one door in. So for those, you may just have to grab a piece of paper and sketch it out and say, okay, there's our front door, over here is an office, there's a little door going in that office, you know, over here is the desk, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's not too hard in those size of buildings to write your own floor plan. So you will walk through the building and assess the areas needing connections and the way that you'll assess them is you'll say okay what devices go where your rule of thumb is if it can be wired do it you'll see a lot of devices that support both wired and wireless connections always prefer the wired it is more stable more reliable it's faster it's more consistent you want to stick with wired if you can and leave the wireless the devices that have to be wireless so look around where are the desktops where are the laptops where are the servers going to go printers oh most people will get printers that support wireless and wired and they'll say ah we'll just do it wirelessly don't do that if you can. Wire the printer in. IP phones, IP cameras, wireless access points. Again, those devices extending the wired network into the air, they need a wired connection of their own. Security systems, power control, thermostats, there's almost everything can be connected to the network nowadays. Identify where those devices are in the building so you can already have in your mind where the network cable is going to go. You might just choose a strategy to plan for the unexpected and put one connection per wall. If this is your floor plan, you might say, hey, I'll just put a, a cable here, a cable here, a cable here, and a cable here. So I know no matter where they locate the desks or the devices in that room, there's gonna be at least one wall jack that's there. Now, if you do that, you, you risk wasting because you may end up installing wall jacks that never end up being used. You might choose to install wall jacks with two ports or three ports. They make these things sometimes that have eight ports on them and you can run eight individual cables so maybe this room is a, a copy room and you've got all kinds of printers so you can fan out from that one wall jack to all the different devices that are in there. All right, we just walked into the new office space. The front door is sitting behind me, assessment mode on. Now what are we assessing? We're looking for devices that will connect to the network and usually you'll have uh, the building owner or uh, the, somebody with an authority to say, yeah, this device is gonna go here, this device is gonna go here. Um, but we don't have that person with us. So I'm gonna give you the questions that you would be asking them as you went through and did this. First thing that I see here is I see a couple offices, one right there, one right there. I see a desk sitting right here with the computer. So I go, okay, network device, computer. Uh, I see a phone sitting right here. Now, uh, my mind immediately says, is that an IP phone? And I'm looking at that logo right there on the back. It says Cisco, so I go, yes, it is. That's a, a phone that runs off of the data network. It's gonna be our responsibility and that's becoming more pervasive throughout the world is voice over IP systems where you have one network entity that rules them all. Uh, so at this desk, I see two devices, computer, phone. My eyes track to that corner up there where I see it looks like a motion sensor of some sort. So it tells me there's a security room. My mind is already going, is there a security system that needs to be connected to the network? Uh, this is a troubling corner to me. I see a couple printers obviously not set up all the way yet because they would be sitting on a desk. Uh, behind there is a network jack and I go, okay, I see one cable going to this printer. Uh, there's no cable going to this printer, so it's either not on or somebody uh, took a shortcut and tried to make it a wireless. I see Wi-Fi on the uh, printer itself right there and I'm like, ah, 
don't like that. I don't like printers being on wireless. It's not as stable. Uh, I see another cable coming across the floor here to this device. So that tells me uh, they positioned the computer in this desk here, uh, but they did not uh, run a network cable to that wall. Now, I will say kudos to them because I've seen a lot of people rearrange their office seating uh, in a non-ideal configuration because they're like, oh, well, I guess the network jack is there. We're gonna have to move that person there. You don't wanna do that. You wanna have people sit where they should sit and have the network come to them. Now I come into this room right here and I see a desk, computer sitting on the floor, looks like an IP phone and a printer. So immediately my mind goes three network devices here. I'm also looking at the ceiling because I'm looking for a wireless access point. I haven't seen one as of yet. I see a little motion sensor uh, sitting on the ceiling right there, but um, no wireless access. Now this office right here, I'm going to keep off the grid because it's my CBT Nuggets room. And I know this one's of course got a solid network, so we'll keep that one out. Two hallways. It looks like one going down this way, one going down this way. Now, again, I'm trying to train your eyes. My eyes go to this thermostat on the wall. I go, okay, Honeywell, is that a network connected thermostat? Uh, just from the archaic look of it, I would say probably not, but that, mind, that goes through my mind because a lot of those will have network cables that go into the back of them. Uh, some of them will be Wi-Fi connected. I walk into the second portion of this building. Looks like there's a uh, security system. Again, same thought as the thermostat. Is that network connected? And it looks like a little break room or break area. This is where I would start asking questions. Uh, do you want an IP phone on the wall sitting right there? Sometimes people like having a phone in the break area. Are any of the break room devices going to be network connected? It sounds crazy, but a lot of times you'll have uh, coffee makers, espresso machines in that case. Uh, that'll be network connected. Uh, walk over here. Let's take a look at uh, some of these other offices. I'll go uh, left first. Looks like we have a flower on the wall. A uh, couple looks like IP phones sitting here. Look at that. I'm seeing the computer over here. Network cable stretched across. I don't, I don't like that. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of the, the, the wall jack should be hidden behind whatever desk is there. So you would either turn this desk, which again is changing the configuration of the room based on where the network is, or run a network cable on that wall. I'm getting ahead of myself. Oh, look at this. Here's a wireless access point, but it's obviously not connected to anything. Now, some people when they first see this are surprised because they expect to see the little antennas and stuff coming out. Actually, in most business networks, you're gonna see uh, ones with internal antennas like this that are very aesthetic, very pleasing to the eye rather than all having all these little antennas sticking out of the ceiling. Uh, this is obviously not connected to anything right now. Let's continue on. Walk across the hall. Uh, to this side, I see a computer. Uh, I see an IP phone, I see a laptop, I see another computer. Over there is the network wall jack. So again, just getting a feel, still not seeing any wireless access points on the ceiling. That's fine, oh, looks like we've got a uh, snowflake on the ceiling. Uh, come over here, look at this room. It's empty. This is where I would start questioning, who's gonna be in here? Where are they gonna be sitting? What devices are they gonna have? Are they gonna have printers, computers, uh, phones in this room? How are we going to set this, this room up? So that, that looks like a room yet to be charted. We would interview the business owner there. Uh, coming back over here, we're actually into another tenant of this building, uh, a shirt printing company. They print logos and, and whatnot on shirts. There's their shirt printing machine. Uh, obviously, I see a laptop sitting right there with the network connection. Now, immediately I go, okay, laptop, network connection, that probably means there is no wireless network in this uh, facility because they would have connected that wirelessly or they're just going for more stability because maybe it's a poor wireless network uh, and so on. I see over there in that corner past all of these shirt hanging racks, there's another desk with a computer on it. So I'm thinking, okay, network jack, another uh, potential wireless thermostat. I don't see any phones in this room. So I'm thinking to myself, do they not want them? Do they need some. Um, I'm always thinking network devices. Looks like a, a room here with a couple computers. Uh, again, I still don't see any phones on the desk. It's fine. Printer right there on the wall. I see a network connection coming out of the back of that, so somebody has wired that in. Uh, looks like a equipment storage room in this case, so another interview. Who's going to go in there? What network devices? And then I'm coming over here. Ah, the most important room of all. This is the main distribution facility, or MDF. We'll talk a lot about this room. Look at that in the upper corner right there. All the network cabling coming out and terminating right here into that, uh, that's actually a patch panel, going to the network switch. This is actually a mess. 
Um, a network room should not look like that, but far too many of them do. I see just piles of equipment. You'll see a lot of times people turn these things into mop closet. You'll see people uh, using them as file rooms and oh, it's shoved over here in the corner. You should have a dedicated room, even in an office this size. This is, this is the scope of this suite. All right, we're back at the front of the building and there's one more seed I wanna plant in your mind while we're at this assessment phase, and that is wireless. Now wireless is going to be a completely uh, different topic, a completely different series to get into the depth of wireless that we need to. But I will tell you just on a precursor, as I'm thinking about cabling, a building of this size would probably need two wireless access points. I'd stick one right here or, or here uh, in this hallway to cover the front portion of the building. And then I would stick one um, probably right here or more likely actually uh, right here uh, to cover the back half of the building so that we've got two wireless zones. It'll give a good overlap and signal between the two so that we have a solid coverage for them. Again, more on wireless uh, later. I'm just identifying where these devices will go at this point. Now walking away from that building, this is the floor plan that I created. It's definitely not perfect from a square footage and placement and all that kind of stuff of all the different walls and doors. I think I even have an office over here without a door because I used pen when I drew this thing up. But it's perfect for what it's used for and that is to start a discussion. Look at what I've identified here. In the back of the building, I identified the MDF, the main distribution facility. I showed where all the cabling drops are coming down. I show where that server cabinet is here. I also identified that storage room as no devices question mark. Why did I put that there? Because my next step is now to communicate to the management or the customer, whoever I'm working with as I'm doing this cabling installation. I wanna be sure that when I walk away, they knew that I had identified that room as no devices and they had said, yes, that's okay. I identified this room as two computers with no phones because I'm starting to think, this is very strange. We've got a shirt company that have no phones. Either it's a very small shirt company that runs everything off of their cell phones or this is a potential missed expectation where I'll do all the cabling and they'll say, well, what about the phones? And I'll go, what phones? Again, notice this is, I'm not even identifying the cable drops and where the actual wall jacks are going to go. Right now I'm just saying, here's the devices. Can we agree on this? I'll identify the wall jacks in the next nugget after we have identified these are truly the devices that are there. Notice I also identified the shirt printing machine. Why? Because I don't know what that thing is. I think it might connected the network. It looked big and it had a screen. So maybe it's network compatible. Maybe I need to put a wall jack there eventually. Maybe not. I just want to identify it because it's a point of discussion. I identified the computer that was sitting there. I said, hey, there's a wireless access point that's going to be needed there. As I move down a little bit, I've identified the security system I saw on the wall, the thermostat. I put phone question mark because that's a point of discussion. Hey, are you going to want a phone on that wall like we identified? At the front of the building, I identified the wireless access point that's needed up there. I noted for myself that there's a glass window that may come into play a little bit later. I noted the printers that I saw sitting there in the corner and that there was a computer and a phone sitting at this desk. I noted the forbidden CBT Nuggets room because I said, well, we'll just leave that one off. But when I'm communicating with the management, I want to have a full sign off. Expectations are fully set that these are all the devices that are in the network. I guarantee you as you sit down and talk Talk to the management, they're going to say, oh, actually, we don't we don't want the, that computer over there. It would be ideal if we put it over here in this corner or you know what? We're going to be moving somebody else into that office. So we're going to put them right there. This is the time to have the conversation, not after we've done all the cabling for this building. Here's what you're after in this phase one sign off. You want to find out, are these the correct locations of the devices? Are they going to move? Just because you walk in and see a desk in a certain position doesn't necessarily mean that's what they want or the ideal position for that. Will there be other devices that you're adding? Maybe other computers, laptops? Is it other IP phones? I mean, start, start also thinking about the non-traditional technology that needs connections like that shirt machine or thermostat or security system or IP surveillance. Valence, the stuff that we didn't even think about when we were uh, walking through. There's a lot of non-traditional stuff, stuff that you don't usually think about when you think of IT that needs network connections. Would you like the potential of adding devices in the future? Get a sign off on that storage room that we saw. The empty office room where there was nobody sitting in there yet. 
Are you going to be adding maybe two, three different people? The whole goal of all of this is that you are doing a cabling installation one time. You don't want to have to come back and come back and come back and go, oh, well, now we're doing this and now we're doing this one. Create a final document. And now I'm, I'm talking more on the contract sense. If you are working this as a consultant, you're going to want to make sure that you have that final document, that floor plan, probably looking a lot more professional than this by the time you get to this phase. Signed and dated. Even if you're working for a company and this is your employer, you want to make sure that you do have that documentation that everybody fully agreed on that you can always come back to if there is any disagreement because that is what keeps your relationship happy. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of this nugget that you will be able to walk into a new building and assess network requirements based on devices. And here's how we're going to prove that. Ideally, you'll be able to do a practical assessment of your first building, meaning perform a device assessment of your home or office as possible. Or if you've got a church or a nonprofit that will allow you to do some network cabling for them for free, maybe they'll buy the cable for you and allow you to get the experience of doing this yourself. The first thing I want you to do is to document Document the device to be installed and their locations. If you're in your home, we live in a world that there's enough network connected devices. Find your Roku, find your Xbox. If you've got it on wireless, it's time for that device to be wired. I literally want you to create a floor plan just like we did right here, but I want you to do it for your environment and identify where the devices will be installed. Once you have at least two or three locations identified, I want you to identify the MDF, as in where will the cable go from those locations that you've identified? It could be a spare closet, it could be a bedroom, and it could even be a small portion of the bedroom. Like this is what my network closet got reduced to when we had child number six. My wife said, dear husband, our home will not fit six children and have an entire bedroom dedicated as the MDF. My point is your MDF does not have to consume a huge amount of space, but you will want to make sure that it has power. We'll be plugging some devices in. If you are in a place where the practical is virtually impossible, then dive into the theoretical, which is a writing assignment. Do some Google searching and find a building floor plan, and then write a one paragraph explanation to your manager describing what the floor plan is showing. 